Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Titus Leaf Glover, and guess what? We've got another Can Ever Design Quick Tips. This is so you keep your compositional skills sharp, and you help me change the future of art by sharing this with other artists. The more artists that know about these techniques, the more we can change the future of art. We won't be stuck with generic rules or anything like that guiding our compositions. We'll be in power of our composition, and we'll be able to create just like the masters. This one was recommended in the comments below, so if you do have a, a master artist that you'd like to see analyzed, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do to get to him. But this is a scene from Apocalypse Now, and the cinematographer is Vittorio Storaro. I'm going to try and use my accent there. Excellent movie, excellent recommendation, and I love this movie, and the visuals are quite stunning. So let's get into it. This first scene, we're going to see how he uses the vertical center line, and we've got the horizontal center line also, but we're creating nice balance from left to right and from top to bottom. We've got repeating shapes, okay, the helicopter. Also, the helicopters are sideways, so if this was a silhouette, we could tell they're helicopters. It's called aspect of view. So like the ancient Egyptians would draw the side profile of the head or the limb spread. You can also do this with a twist of the body. You're seeing multiple sides of the subject, but this is called aspect of view because we can easily identify what's going on here, even if it's a silhouette of the subject. Okay, so we've got nice balance, we've got aspect of view, we've got repeating shapes, and I'm going to show a clip of that scene. Okay, so the second scene, you see anything that stands out to you? We've got nice aerial perspective, okay, the smoke. Cinematographers, if you watch any action movie, you're definitely going to see some type of aerial perspective being created. So Gregory Crutzen uses this a lot in his photos, but also in any type of movie that's got action or mystery, you're going to see this added fog here. This creates nice mystery and depth, and that's what we've got going on right here. Definitely separating him from the background. So if he was overlapped with this boat in the background, he wouldn't be standing off the background as much. But he's got a nice figure on relationship here. Okay, also we have separated shapes. Cinema loves using separated shapes as well. TV shows, movies, anything like that. Because you don't want your subject kind of behind the other subject, right? So we can use this technique in photography as well. And I love using it in street photos, trying to use those separated shapes and the masters of street photography like Alex Webb, Henry Cartier Bresson, they all use those separated shapes, okay? It helps clarify the image, simplify it, and shows a hierarchy of size, okay? So the third scene, we've got more repeating shapes and a nice figure gun relationship. So if this was a silhouette, we'd see all these helicopters pretty easy, standing out against that simple background. I've done a lot of beach photos and that's why I love shooting with the ocean as the background because you've got nice figure gun relationship. You can capture aspect view, you can capture separated shapes. It all complements the composition. Okay, so that's scene three. This is another one, awesome scene. We've got an aspect of view of the guy standing and also the helicopter. So if these are silhouettes, we could easily identify them against the background. We've got a nice figure ground relationship. If you run an imaginary line around him, he easily stands off the background. We've also got separated shapes. Okay, everybody's kind of separated here. This guy is leaning down, and then the helicopter is above there. This helicopter is above that one. And this guy is almost separated, but then there's this guy in the background that's kind of overlapping, which is fine. And probably within the motion of the scene, they might be separated too but we've got nice aerial perspective in the background with the explosions, just all around pretty awesome. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. This scene, we're gonna have more aerial perspective. So his head is pretty dark. If he wasn't well lit with this light coming across here and then this orange light right here, then he'd be blending into this background a little bit too much. It wouldn't be as mysterious and cinematic if it didn't have that smoke in there. The way that light's coming across and it's illuminating that smoke right there, it's pretty cool. So that's aerial perspective in that one. Also, one thing you might notice, I'm gonna critique every movie that has lightning. <laughs> you can see, if you have the audio down and you're just watching the scene, the lightning actually just looks like a strobe light. I don't know how they can recreate that to make it look more realistic, but with the added special effects of lightning and thunder, it makes it look more realistic. But if you have the audio down, it kind of looks like just a strobe light. Anyway, something to critique of all movies.
here's another one. This has got more separated shapes. Awesome, separated shapes. We've got aspective view. Everybody's separated here. We've got the limb spread here. You can tell he's standing. Limb spread there, limb spread here, aspective view turning sideways. We got aerial perspective in the background, creating a nice figure ground relationship. Lots of action, lots of techniques. Such a great movie. Okay, well, there's the aerial perspective. But that's it for Vittorio Storaro. And if you have another movie, master artist, sculptor, anything, comment below and I'm going to see what I can do to help you guys out and analyze them. Okay, because these techniques are definitely going to help you if you apply it to your work. Slowly but surely. Thanks for your support and I'll see you in the next one.